Each spring, we present a fresh spring-themed artistic challenge, followed by an April exhibit. This year, for our second annual event, we called for art inspired by the phrase, Spring Eternal. We are pleased to share the lovely and diverse results of that call with our artists, local, and online communities. The April 2021 exhibition is hosted by Elsinore Gallery in downtown Salem, Oregon.
I'd like to introduce our judge, Kathleen Haney. She is a member of many watercolor societies and holds signature status in the Northwest Watercolor Society and the Western Federation of Watercolor Societies. She has taught in high school art programs for 25 years and continues to teach watercolor classes through the Kaiser Art Association. She has illustrated for six children's books and has her art in private collections in the US, Europe, Asia, and Australia. As long as she can remember, she loved observing, drawing, and creating. Surrounded by the beauty of God's creation and man's designs, it is an awesome and humbling experience to express these in her own images by her own hand. Her passion has become intensified through watercolor. She loves the translucency, movement, and vibrancy of the medium. Her background in sculpture pushes her to create strong forms and her love for color is evident. It is important to her that not only should her work be appreciated from a distance, but also engage the viewer on close inspection. The bottom line is she loves to paint. Any subject can inspire an idea and any situation can become a reason to create. Many thanks to Kathy for being the judge of our Spring Eternal Exhibition. The show is called Spring Eternal, and uh, so it brings up all kinds of images, especially this time of year, uh, about flowers and emerging and birds returning and the bright blue sky amongst the rain clouds. And, um, but it also, to me, strongly brings up the idea of hope. Hope springs eternal in the human heart. and. Uh, I think that was my underlying inspiration for choices that I made in this show, is that sense of hope, especially in a year like we've had. Um, the idea of coming out into a new beginning um, is a strong desire that I have. My process for judging this show was to go through and look at all 75 images, and I did that three or four times before I started making decisions. And my, my first decision was, um, did it match the theme? And uh, that pretty much covered all of them. There are a few I probably don't know the reason behind, but, but the artist does. Um, the, this next round, I looked for just how appealing it was, and so, meaning, I, I picked 22 that I, I really liked. I didn't have a number, that's just what I came up with. Uh, and then I looked at them carefully for technical skill. And having taught art, I've done most kinds of media and have some sense of what it takes to, to do something satisfactorily in that. Um, and then I looked at the use of elements and principles. And a uh, quick review, elements are the things we use to make art. Not pencils and pens, but shape and form and line and color and texture. Um, and then principles are how we use those things, Do we how we create unity or balance uh, or movement using those elements. Then I went through and just looked at the creativity of them. Did they go beyond just a picture of something? Did they show something or reveal something for the viewer. Uh, and then I was down to about 11. I still had 11 <laughs> out of 75. So then I went back and I looked for what I call punch. What are the ones that just really hit me for whatever reason? Um, uh, and so then I ended up with six. And that's how many awards are given out, so then I knew I had reached the right number. But I did all those online, so coming to the gallery today and looking at them in person, I could also evaluate their presentation if they were professionally submitted, uh, which poor presentation can ruin the best artwork. So that was the criteria I used. This honorable mention is by Glenda Goodrich and it's called Spring Alive, uh, and it's mixed media. Um, 
And I, I love the dark coming into the light, the, the spring colors, the yellow greens in the background. Uh, and there's a sense of celebration in it and movement. You know, we've all been so confined and kind of locked in a space and this has that freeing, the arms outstretched, reaching for the stars, the birds returning and uh, the sense of movement that goes through here with the whoops, repetition of the birds and the waves. This is a piece by Maria Winter and it's called Color of Life and it's a fabric art design and I, it is chosen as an honorable mention. Uh, her use of the circular shape is a difficult one to do. I like how she repeated the circles in her design but contrasted it with a linear uh, value in the stitching. Uh, it also has a real sense of spring uh, with cooler colors. Even, even the reds she used are cooler so it's not quite summer. We're not into the heat of it yet but moving from the blues to the to the warms. This honorable mention is called Eternal Spring by Leland Gilson. And um, I was really drawn to it. Of course, it has the spiral, <laughs> you know, the spring of life. The uh, glass is, has, shows a twist of a spiral. I see those things as always uplifting and the light to me represents eternal life. So um, I think it, it's a pretty clever uh, encapsulating uh, vision of, of the theme. In third place is a watercolor by Becky Hesedal called March Garden. And um, I was struck by the sense of these daffodils, the first signs of spring. Crocuses are the, the first warning of spring. This is the first beginning of spring when daffodils pop up. And they look like they're struggling, and they're struggling out of the foliage of the winter and the cool um, things. So that's my sense of coming into spring, or springy, eternal. Um, she had a wonderful use of watercolor uh, texture that she got here, the leaving of white spaces throughout, little sparkles. And then the black, the back leaves that she has in the sky, which really make a sense of water and moisture and dampness. That's all part of our Northwest winter and spring. In second place, is a sculpture, a gourd sculpture by Loretta Hahn that's called Tickle Talk. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought she was singing Hallelujah, which is just how I feel with spring and coming. Uh, but I was really impressed with the, the character of it and the amount of detail in it. And it all works to go together. It's got complementary colors. She has the big round shapes, but linear arms and legs. Um, and it also speaks something to my, my love of literacy and my, especially for early childhood. Um, anyway, it's delightful and it brings joy. And in first place is a little treasure by Ermgard Freeberg and it's called Forget My Nuts. And uh, it is a photograph, though when I first saw it, I did not realize it until partway through the judging, because it didn't really matter. It has a very uh, painterly quality. It's uh, well balanced. But it is, uh, if you can't see it very well, it is little forget-me-nots frozen in ice. And I assume this is from our recent ice storm. And I thought this was the time and this was the show for this photograph to really be appreciated. Uh, it talks of our recent common experience and uh, it shows that hope. You know, we are frozen in time, but we can bloom 
the bloom is going to come back. When the ice melts, uh, when we are freed from quarantine and able to go out and enjoy the world. So it just seemed to me a perfect commentary for this show.